Hello again, this is Richard of R1CK1 Reviews. Now to be fair, I've had quite a lengthy absence, you know. I've had prior commitments, I've had exams recently, and everything's been hectic, so it's been quite a while since my last review, you know. You might have seen it on YouTube, put a comment on it or something. Now I'm back, and I'm gonna get out straight on with it with uh, another Sonic game, Sonic Unleashed. Let's get this show on the road. So what exactly are you getting when you buy this game? Well to put it simply to you, this is a game of two halves. The classic formula of blasting through a level as fast as you can from classic Sonic games has returned, much to the delight of many Sega fans alike. And thrown into the mix is Sega's latest experimentation, Sonic the Werehog. Now to be completely fair, 3D Sonic has been going quite so well. I mean, you take a look at Next Gen Sonic. The gameplay in that was all messed up and the game was all wrong. But on looking at this game, it seems like Zegas actually listened to the fans. They just want classic Sonic to be back. And I'm glad to say they have managed to pull it off. I mean, just take a look at this next montage. I'll stop talking soon. How can you argue with that? The basis of the classic Sonic levels, as aforementioned, is to blast your way through the level as hard and as fast as you can. Get as many rings as you can, collect as many points as you can, doing it in the fastest time possible, and all of that. The camera angle also does this thing where it sometimes switches from 3D to 2D. It's all making like a 2.5D. Zega have also developed a unique graphics engine for this game that they've called the Hedgehog Engine. I won't go into any detail, but I'll say this. It's done a hell of a job. The graphics in this game kick ass. And I mean, if you play this on the PS3 or Xbox, which uses a high definition, you will be absolutely blown away. Sonic can also perform special moves in these kind of levels, these include sliding, supersonic boost, and this is cool, Sonic can actually drift, look at that. Plus there's a quick step, there's a homing attack as well, and wall jumping. So it seems like Sonic and Leash has pushed all the right buttons and taken the right step forward for the Sonic franchise. I mean you've got sophisticated gameplay, intricate level design, extremely good graphics, and this all means the player is going to have extremely huge amounts of fun trying to beat all these levels. So Sonic seems to be getting better and better in this game, and you may be thinking, well, the only way to go is up for this game. But it is only one half of the story, for when the sun goes down, Sonic takes on an entirely new character. Allow me to introduce to you, Sonic the Werehog. And Dr. Eggman is back yet again with his neck in the woods. And this time, he wants to use the power of the dark energy that's locked within the earth for millions of years to take over the world. And this has a drastic side effect on our hero. For when day turns into night, he turns into this. Now if Sonic Unleashed had only included the daytime levels in this game, we probably would get a perfect score from me and probably everybody else. But thanks to Zega's latest experimentation, this game is hugely let down. The speed of the daytime level seems to have just disappeared, really. And all you get to do now is fight, puzzle, fight, puzzle, 
fight puzzle. And these levels last about three times longer on average than the daytime levels. I mean, that's just stupid. So let's take a look at the gameplay for this. So you have your life counter, score and rings as you did in the daytime levels, but this time you get a health meter and some other bar. And just look, all you're doing is throwing punches at the same enemy over and over again. I mean, it's, these levels don't leave so much for experimentation, you know? And I bet I can tell what this guy's thinking while he's playing this. Bored, 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 tedious, painful, still bored. Hate Zega, please make game with just Sonic next time, please. Still bored, still bored. Verge of suicide. So now we get on to the puzzly parts. The Werehog's new stretchy arms allow him to grab on and climb up these vertical poles here and swing on these horizontal bars. And you can only grab on it when you see that green target if you saw it then. There. God, this one will take way too long. I will try to beat up this robot here. Took the shield. That got rid of it. Well, sure you get this combo counter at the uh, side here, but it doesn't really count for anything. It just shows you how good you are playing the game. It doesn't really count for much. And beating up the bad guys in this game will give you experience points, which you can use to upgrade your attacks and your personal stats. But this is complicated and most of the time pointless. And if you buy the Wii or PS2 versions, you'll be spared this to an extent. Although you will have to make do without the high definition that the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions provide. And you'll also have to make do with a fewer amounts of levels. You'll also fight a boss from time to time, in which you'll ever play against Eggman or one of the dark creatures. These will also be played as either Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic the Werehog. And what's cool about these boss battles is that sometimes, when you play in the Sonic the Hedgehog, the stage will utilize the 2D to 3D camera angle. It'll just make the boss battle seem a bit more entertaining, shall we say. Because these boss battles are incredibly short and don't take that much of a beating to beat, really. Although as a werehog, you get this nifty action sequences which can really deal some damage with. Moving swiftly on, there were these hub towns that you had to interrogate to get doodads for the game and progress it even further. Cutscenes have done quite a good job, although they break up the acting too much and are not really involved with the gameplay all that much, really. The character lineup has also been dwindled down substantially. I mean, it misses out key characters in the series like Knuckles and Shadow, but you still get characters like Tails and Eggman and all of that. Although, the addition of new characters, they are incredibly underdeveloped. All you get is this grouchy old scientist, and this thing, which later gets known to us as Chip. You can tell this character is incredibly underdeveloped because it just walks up to people and says this. Want some chocolate? That would probably scare people. The voice acting is so- Is everyone here alright? Yeah. And the soundtrack for this game is very good as well. I mean, it's mixing some orchestral pieces along with the driving rock pieces for the levels and all that. So, to conclude, Sonic Unleashed has its upsides and its downsides. It's given us the best daytime speed level that the Sonic franchise has ever seen. But once again, the game has been severely let down by too much failed experimenting in the form of the werehog. This is just another case of having to make do with what we get before our patience pays off. But who knows, maybe one day it will pay off. So, everything considered, my final verdict is this. Sonic Unleashed gets a score of... And that's all I've got time for, I'm afraid. So, as before, please leave your comments and requests and whatnot on the uh, comments board. And I'll try and be back soon. But for now, this is Richard of R1CK1 Reviews, signing off.